Well, hey guys, I'm Lynn Hansen. I'm one of the pastors here at North Park Church. Really glad to be sharing with you in our life groups this week again. And uh, you know, we're in the winding down on this series uh, called Help. You see the awesome um, uh, display behind me here. And uh, this is the last time uh, you'll see it in a life group DVD. Um, it's been an awesome series. Our key verse is, uh, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. That's from Psalm 46. And, you know, what we see there is that help is available. Help is um, really every place. You know, it's, it surrounds us, and yet sometimes we still have trouble getting the help that we need. We might even fail in spite of all the help that's around us. So why does that happen? What keeps you from getting the help that you need? Well, sometimes the problem is that we just don't believe that we need the help. We might be surrounded by it, but do we really believe we need the help? Uh, we don't see our own need. For one reason or another, we don't want to see the need, or we don't see the need, or we're deceived, uh, something like that, and, and we don't get the help that we need because of it. Now, uh, I'm going to tell you a story here for our life groups uh, from uh, Matthew chapter 21. I want you to listen very carefully. It really talks about this um, inability to see our need, and um, it's um, a great story. Listen carefully. Afterward, you're going to want to rebuild the story. Somebody's going to try to do that from memory. Everybody else will help, so listen very carefully. Uh, Jesus says, now listen to another story. A certain landowner planted a vineyard, <clears throat> built a wall around it, dug a pit for pressing out the grape juice, and built a lookout tower. Then he leased the vineyard to tenant farmers and moved to another country. At the time of the grape harvest, he sent his servants to collect his share of the crop. But the farmers grabbed his servants, beat one, killed one, and stoned another. So the landowner sent a larger group of his servants to collect for him, but the results were the same. Finally, the owner sent his son, thinking, Surely they will respect my son. But when the tenant farmers saw his son coming, they said to one another, Here comes the heir to the estate. Come on, let's kill him and get the estate for ourselves. So they grabbed him, dragged him out of the vineyard, and murdered him. When the landowner of the vineyard returns, Jesus asked, What do you think he will do to those farmers? The religious leaders replied, he will, do, uh, he will put the wicked men to a horrible death and lease the vineyard to others who will give him his share of the crop after each harvest. Then Jesus asked them, Didn't you ever read this in, scriptures, in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will produce the proper fruit. Anyone who stumbles over that stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone it falls on. When the leading priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they realized he was telling the story against them, and they were the wicked farmers. They wanted to arrest him, but they were afraid of the crowds who considered Jesus to be a prophet. All right, somebody go ahead and uh, try to retell that story as best you can from memory. Everybody else, after they're finished, uh, kind of add in what it is that they missed and, and rebuild the story. We'll get it into our hearts and our minds, and we'll recall the story very well that way. So go ahead and do that now, please. So here's some uh, discussion questions. You ready for this? Of course you are. Discussion questions. Um, question number one. Uh, can you recall a time when you were offered help uh, that you really, really needed but didn't accept it? Go ahead and share that with your group. Would you please share that time? Okay, question number two, uh, as you look at this story and you see that there are a number of characters in the story, um, both in Jesus' story and in uh, the, the actual setting, there's a number of characters to select from. Who do you identify most with? Pray about that a minute. Let God uh, go ahead and, 
and, and help you and direct you in figuring this out, who do you identify with most? Go ahead and talk about that, please. Well, you know, um, you see in the story that the priests and the Pharisees clearly knew that Jesus was talking about them. He was talking to them. He was talking about them. The story was against them, the Bible says. Uh, it was meant to open their eyes. And so, you know, question three is this. You know, to some extent, their eyes were opened and they closed them again. I mean, they knew that it was about them. So their eyes were open. And they closed their eyes again, obviously. Why do you think that they did this? Talk about that, would you please? Well, question number four, we're going quite a bit deeper here. So, um, you know, let God's spirit really move you and direct you here and, and speak to your heart about this. Is it possible for your eyes to be open and yet for you to refuse the truth? I mean, for you to just close them again and, and look the other way. Is it possible to have your eyes open and yet refuse the truth? Um, are, are you doing this with anything, any truth, any situation right now, presently? I mean, let's not go back 10 years and say, boy, I really had my eyes shut then. Is there anything right now? Any situation right now, any truth right now, any area of your life right now where you are closing your eyes to what it is that God is saying to you. What is it and why are you closing your eyes to it? All right, go ahead and let God's Spirit lead you through that question. And question number five, our final question, this is the walk away question. What is it that God wants you to take away from your life group this week? Okay, pray for a moment and really focus now. This is the big deal. It doesn't do any good to have been through a life group if you don't walk away with some growth with what it is that God wants to do in your heart. So what is it that God wants you to walk away with this week? Um, you know, listen very carefully now. Whatever your situation is, guys, whatever, as we close out this series, think about this. Whatever your situation is, don't be afraid to open your eyes and to keep them wide open. See, that's the essence of walking with God, is trusting Him enough to keep your eyes open so that, you know, God is our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in trouble. So I'm not keeping the help out. I'm not uh, even when it doesn't look like it, it, it's help, I'm not refusing it. I'm keeping my eyes open. Guys, you can do this. You can do this. God bless you, and I will see you.